16 strange laws of Mali, the most dangerous country in the world. Banning people from killing mosquitoes, prohibiting wearing yellow clothes, and even forbidding dolls, Mali has regulations that shock anyone who hears about them. In this video, we'll explore 16 banned laws and strange practices in this country. Believe me, everything I'm about to tell you will truly astonish you. Number 16. Mosquito Harming Prohibition In the eyes of everyone, mosquitoes are always seen as pests, and we often easily kill them if they bother us. But in Mali, it's foolish to harm mosquitoes because they are actually prohibited from being killed in this country. According to the traditional beliefs of the Dogon people in Mali, mosquitoes are the embodiment of ancestral spirits. In this belief, mosquitoes are not just disease-causing insects, but also the embodiment of ancestral spirits, considered part of the mythological and religious system of the Dogon people. Therefore, killing mosquitoes is seen as a disrespectful act that offends ancestors and spirits, which can result in serious consequences for the person who commits the act. The consequences associated with killing mosquitoes include illness, misfortune, and even death, according to the traditional beliefs of the Dogon people. This reflects the combination of religious beliefs and cultural elements in approaching health and environmental issues. Understanding and respecting the traditional beliefs of the Dogon people and other ethnic communities in Mali regarding mosquitoes can help us understand more about the mindset and way of life of the people in this country, as well as enhance respect and empathy when interacting and working with them. Number 15. Prohibition of wearing yellow on Fridays. You can wear yellow on any day in Mali, except on Fridays because there is a strange law in Mali that prohibits people from wearing yellow clothes on Fridays. In Mali, yellow is considered a lucky color but only on other days of the week. On Fridays, yellow is seen as a symbol of bad luck and may bring misfortune. In Malian culture, Friday is considered a special day, a day when many people perform rituals and ceremonies related to remembering and honoring ancestors. In this context, yellow is not considered appropriate because it is associated with mourning and unlucky events. The government issued this ban to ensure that this day is respected and to maintain tradition, thereby discouraging the wearing of yellow clothes on a day deemed inappropriate according to the cultural values and religious beliefs of the country. Although yellow often symbolizes good luck in Malian culture, on Fridays it is seen as a symbol of mourning and misfortune demonstrating the complexity and multi-dimensionality of color meanings in the country's culture. Number 14. Plenty of gold yet very poor. It sounds truly crazy, but did you know that the people of Mali are so poor that they only have gold? Yes, that's right, they only have gold. Mali's population is only 16.3 million, but one-fifth of them rely primarily on gold as their source of income. To boost the economy, the government allows everyone to have the right to mine gold. So in Mali, every household mines gold, and everyone digs for gold. The number of people involved in gold mining is too numerous to count. Even children are involved in this arduous work. Everyone is eager to earn a little money to make ends meet, or to find a big piece of gold to change their lives. However, this is just a dream for the poor because the gold-bearing areas belong to mining owners. To set foot here, people are forced to endure a life of labor. Mali's production sector is also backward, so the method of gold mining here is very primitive. People often use scrapers made from the bones of wild animals, so the efficiency is very low. In addition, the large number of gold miners leads to low returns. Moreover, they are also subject to price pressure from buyers. However, because the quality of life is not good, the happiness they secretly hope for is very simple to mine gold every day to live for a few days in sufficiency. The large number of gold miners has gradually depleted mineral reserves. However, people in localities in Mali still dig into the soil every day to find the shiny metal in hardship. It's not because they put too much hope in this piece of land to stay there forever, but because they are too poor to be able to move to other places to live and work. Number 13. The most dangerous country in the world. I just told you about the political instability, and when I mentioned the conflicts of Islamic states like ISIS, you know why Mali is considered the most dangerous country in the world. Issues include armed conflicts between ethnic and religious groups, the rise of extremist Islamic armed groups, and problems related to organized crime and human trafficking. The security situation in the Sahel region of Africa, where Mali is located, has become a center of instability and conflict. The presence of armed groups such as Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State has caused many security issues and increased the risk of terrorism. 
Additionally, Mali faces serious social and economic issues including poverty, lack of infrastructure, and political instability. These factors together create an unstable and dangerous environment for both the population and those operating in Mali. If there's one piece of advice, I'd advise you not to go to this country. You can still explore interesting things about Mali in the next part of this video instead of going there and risking it. Number 12. Export Hub for Warriors Poverty has led many young Malians to join rebel groups, and that's why you know Mali is a country specialized in exporting jihadist warriors. Mali has become a notorious destination for exporting jihadist warriors, especially from extremist armed groups. This export is often associated with groups like Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State is powerful organizations with significant influence on security in Mali and neighboring countries. These groups often recruit young warriors from Mali and neighboring areas, promising money, benefits and recognition in the community. For some, joining these groups may be seen as an opportunity to escape poverty and seek a new life, while for others it may be due to pressure from local leaders or religion. The export of jihadist warriors from Mali has serious consequences for the Sahel region and the entire African continent, creating an unstable environment and increasing the risk of terrorism and conflict. At the same time, it also causes concern and pressure for the international community in dealing with extremist armed groups and maintaining regional security. Number 11. Women must dress modestly. Mali has a fairly hot climate, and it's really uncomfortable to wear full covering clothes. But girls, you have to do so if you want to be safe in this country. In Mali, women dressing modestly is an important part of the country's long-standing culture and tradition. This reflects respect and protection of the honor of women in Malian society, especially in the Muslim community. Dressing modestly is not just a rule about clothing, but also an expression of respect and expectations for the role and status of women. In Malian culture, women are often seen as the caretakers and protectors of the family, and modest clothing is a way to protect honor and uphold family values. Additionally, in some Muslim communities in Mali, dressing modestly is also considered a religious obligation. For them, wearing clothes that cover up is a way to show respect and reverence for the supreme being and to shield the body from public view. A girl wearing revealing clothes in Mali is not only a behavior that disrespects the country's culture, but she may also be in danger from predators. The truth is Mali is an extremely dangerous country, and as I said, dressing modestly is to keep yourself safe before considering religious and cultural issues. Number 10. Not for LGBTQ individuals. The LGBT community has been recognized by many countries, but if in Mali, this is impossible. If you admit to being gay in Mali, you may be deported from the country, assaulted, or even killed. I don't want to scare anyone, but in reality, in Mali, the LGBT community is still discriminated against, and those belonging to this community are not even considered human. Mali is a country with diverse cultures, influenced by many religions including Islam and traditional beliefs. In this culture, traditional values often impose repression and discrimination against LGBT people, Moreover, in Mali, religion, especially Islam, has a strong influence on society and politics. Views on morality and religion may lead to the perception that LGBT individuals are unacceptable and even criminal. The Malian government also frequently faces pressure from religious groups and public opinion to maintain or even strengthen laws related to LGBT behavior. This leads to legal regulations or public policies tend to oppose, prohibit, or restrict the rights of LGBT people. LGBT individuals often face danger from extremists, even attempting to rape LGBT people with the excuse of wanting them to return to their true gender. That's why this country is truly a very dangerous place for the LGBT community. Number 9. Land without a government. I've mentioned quite a bit about the regulations of the Malian government, but the reality is they can be replaced at any time, because even the government itself is never sure if they will be ousted. Mali has faced significant challenges in maintaining political stability and government management. At one point the country became a land without a government, especially after the military coup in 2012, leading to the collapse of the central government and its weakened control. Several factors have contributed to the increased instability in Mali. These include ethnic and religious tensions, conflicts between armed groups, and the rise of extremist Islamic armed groups, such as Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State is. 
Furthermore, the government's failure to provide basic services and address economic and social issues has created dissatisfaction and unrest among the population, facilitating the rise of insurgent movements and land without governance. Number 8. Terrifying Rituals Since ancient times, this land has witnessed the rise and fall of many kingdoms, each carrying within it inexplicable secrets. This land is not only a place of wars for power, but also a place of venerable and terrifying rituals. In the deep forests and vast deserts, the people of Mali still pursue ancient rituals, mesmerizing and awe-inspiring festivals. One of the most famous rituals in Mali is the ceremony honoring mystical creatures. Every year, villagers organize a grand festival, honoring and praying for their protective mythical creatures. People dress in splendid costumes, wear frightening masks, and dance around the bonfire, creating a vivid and haunting picture. Additionally, Mali is also a place of dark death rituals. In the deep forests, people believe that there are supernatural forces controlling life and death. Therefore, whenever someone dies, they will organize special funeral rites, inviting souls and praying for the peaceful rest of the deceased. In the lands of Mali, these terrifying rituals are not only symbols of the rich culture, but also expressions of the power and excitement of humans facing the greatness and mystery of the universe. Number 7. Prohibited to photograph security personnel and military. You can bring phones, cameras to Mali, but be careful with the photos you take. If security personnel or military locations appear in your memory, it's very difficult for you to leave Mali. Revealing information about security personnel and the military can pose risks to their lives and safety. Prohibiting photography can help keep details about them confidential and not disclosed to those with harmful intentions. Furthermore, by preventing photography, espionage groups or enemies may have difficulty gathering information about security personnel and the military to use in attack or sabotage activities. Therefore, if you photograph security personnel or military facilities, you may be charged with espionage, and then I'm not sure if you can return home or not. Number 6. Antiquities Everywhere If you want to get rich in a short time, you can go to Mali to mine gold, or easier, buy and sell antiques. It may sound unbelievable, but buying antiques there is very easy because they are sold everywhere in this country and at very cheap prices. Mali is a unique destination for art and antique lovers with many shops and unique markets spread across cities and villages. Here, tourists can find a variety of unique antiques from different civilizations, from ancient to modern times. Traditional markets like the Jen Antique Market or the Timbuktu Antique Market are places where one can find exotic items such as pottery, bronze, wood and even rare and precious antiques. These items are often products of skilled craftsmanship and carry a part of Mali's unique history and culture. The antiques displayed in the markets not only enrich the shopping choices for tourists, but also provide an opportunity for them to learn about Mali's diverse culture. Each item has its own story, from production methods to usage in the daily lives of local people. If you dare to come here, don't forget to buy some antiques who knows you will have a large sum of money after returning home thanks to those items. Number 5. Prohibition on bringing Barbie dolls into the country. Few children can resist the charm of Barbie dolls, but in Mali, even if the parents have the means, they cannot buy these beautiful toys for their children. That's because the Malian government has banned them. And even for foreigners, bringing a Barbie doll into their country is completely prohibited. The ban on bringing Barbie dolls into Mali has sparked a large debate nationwide, dividing public opinion into two opposing camps. While some support this decision, believing it to be a positive step to protect Mali's culture and traditional values, there are vehement objections, arguing that banning Barbie dolls infringes on personal freedom and social progress. The Malian government has provided reasons for this decision, citing the negative impact that foreign toys, especially Barbie dolls, can have on the mindset and lifestyle of Malian children. They are concerned that exposure to these foreign toys could create conflicts with traditional values and cause an imbalance in cultural awareness. However, some opponents of this decision have expressed annoyance and dissatisfaction. They argue that banning Barbie dolls not only restricts individual choice but also hinders the development and social progress of Mali. Some believe that instead of banning, the government should focus on education and create diverse options for children to develop comprehensively and sensibly, in fact, this debate has opened up a forum for discussing the role of culture and tradition in the process of social development, as well as the power of personal freedom. 
both sides have valid arguments and valuable opinions and finding a suitable solution may require flexibility and consensus from all parties involved. Number 4. Homeland of the richest person ever to exist on Earth. If you were to visit Mali at this time and witness the hardships of the residents here, you would never be able to imagine how prosperous the Mali Empire once was in the past, and this land was once the birthplace of the richest person in human history, Mansa Musa. He was the ruler of the Mali Empire, a land rich in land, salt and gold. Historians believe that there was a time when the Mali Empire was the largest producer of gold in the world, which means Mansa Musa's total wealth was extremely difficult to quantify. Celebrity net worth estimates his wealth to be around $400 billion, but historians still cannot provide the most accurate figure. With immense wealth, Mansa Musa did not lag behind in extravagance compared to any other monarch. He once embarked on the most extravagant pilgrimage to Cairo with 60,000 people from royal officials to slaves. Although he stayed for only about three months, he spent so much gold in Cairo that it disrupted the local economy. Even over the next 10 years, the price of gold in Cairo remained unstable and out of control. But unfortunately, besides his wealth, he did not leave much of value for posterity, and the Mali Empire gradually declined, with the people of Mali now enduring extremely miserable lives on their own gold heap. Number 3. The Soul of Islam Despite frequent poverty and food shortages, the people of Mali have a reputation for moderation, tolerance, and a rich history as one of the intellectual centers of Islam. Timbuktu, sometimes referred to as the City of 333 Saints, was a religious and educational center in the 15th and 16th centuries, and the city's libraries contained priceless collections of Islamic documents and books. The mosques and Islamic tombs of the city have been recognized by UNESCO as World Heritage Sites, attracting scholars and tourists from all over the world. When you come here, you will feel an indescribable sense of sanctity, but pay attention to your every action, as even small details can be construed as offending their religion, such as using your left hand to greet. Number 2. The Country of Precious Books Once again, I must say that Mali was once an extremely prosperous place, and in its golden age, from the early 14th to the late 16th century, it was a major intellectual center of West Africa. Evidence of this is the enormous collection of ancient books left behind to this day in this land. This is a priceless heritage that needs to be protected and respected. These books are not only a source of knowledge about the history, culture and wisdom of the people of Mali but also symbols of the civilization development of humanity. Among Mali's ancient books are copies of the Quran written in ancient Arabic script, records of history, traditional medical knowledge and even unique literary works. These books are not only the heritage of Mali, but also the heritage of all humanity. However, wars, environmental destruction, and even cultural plunder have put these ancient books at risk of being lost or destroyed. After narrowly escaping destruction twice, hundreds of thousands of ancient manuscripts from West Africa are being preserved and digitized by the people of Timbuktu in the face of escalating violence. And the flames of war could destroy them at any time. Number 1. Mud Mosque, like no other. Mali is not only known for its books but also for its unique architectural structures that have become iconic. Among them, the Great Mosque of Diene is an extremely important religious and cultural center of this West African country. The national symbol of Mali, and also one of the most famous landmarks in Africa, appears on the central position of today's Mali national emblem, the Gen Great Mosque. This symbolizes the Islamic faith, the main religion of Mali, with nearly 95% of the population being Muslims. Along with the ancient city of Dijen, the Great Mosque was recognized by UNESCO as a World Cultural Heritage Site in 1988. This structure dates back to the 13th century, but its current appearance was formed only at the beginning of the 20th century, built in 1907. The mosque, built of mud, is usually made from simple materials such as clay, sand and water, and is often covered with a special material layer to protect against the infiltration of rainwater and wind. Although the building materials seem simple, these structures often carry unique delicacy and aestheticism. Mud mosques are often built with unique architecture, with traditional patterns and intricate details. They are often places of honor and prayer, where communities gather to participate in religious rituals and important events in their lives. In addition to their religious significance, mud mosques also play an important role in preserving and disseminating the culture of the people. They are symbols of the pride and cultural awareness of the people of Mali, as well as highlights in the cultural landscape of the region. 
In the current situation, the preservation and protection of these mud mosques are extremely important, ensuring that this precious cultural heritage is not lost and continues to serve future generations. Alright, thank you for watching the video about 16 bands and strange things in Mali. I hope you found the information interesting and useful. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to get more interesting videos about unique destinations around the world. See you in the next adventures.